Hey Wood Turners, I'm Captain Eddie Castle and welcome to my shop. Today I think you're going to learn from my mistake. Yeah. It was a simple mistake, a real rookie mistake, because I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. I hadn't thought my project completely out, and I tried to show you on a Ustream how to fix it. And it took one of you guys to point out, if I just did it right the first time, I wouldn't have to fix it. You want to know more? All you got to do, watch. Here's the deal. The other night on a Ustream, I was cutting this bowl. I showed you how to, to load it on a chuck and how to put a glue block and then I figured I'd shape the outside. What I was having a problem with is right here. You see that tear out? I had that tear out all over the place and I really was trying to shear scrape to get rid of it and fix it and all that and all I needed to do was cut this correctly and it would have went away. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Let's first talk about what this piece looks like. The grain is running across like this. And then again, across like this. Okay, now that's my grain orientation. What I didn't think about was the right way to cut this. If I was cutting down like I did, I actually cut into the ends of the grain as it was sticking out, sort of like this. I was bumping right into it. That really wasn't a smart move. What it made was the tear out that I have all over the place. And the light's a little bright today. It's a gorgeous sunshiny day in South Louisiana. And But you see the tear out? That's the tear out I was getting because I was coming downhill against the grain to make this cut. When in fact, to fix that or not get that cut, I should have really been cutting more or less uphill. Now, let me back up the camera a little bit and show you what I'm talking about. When I came down, I was going into the ends of the fibers, pushing into the ends. The ones that didn't slice broke off and dropped away. Now, I'm going to take my Ellsworth gouge. I'm going to go back and start reading a bevel and go around this corner. Remember this spot now, okay? My moderate speed is about 1800 RPMs. I'm going to go up and read the bevel. A little twist. I wanted to do this in real time so you see I didn't move, I didn't do anything else. Now let's go back in here and look for that tear. Okay, I'm sorry, the tear? The tear, hey, the tear? The tear? The tear is gone. G-O-N-E, gone. Now, what I did was I pushed on the end grains. And when I pushed on the end grains, I tore it. Now this is an uphill sweep. Uphill. I'm going around the grain. The grain is sticking up like this. And I'm knocking it off gently. You wouldn't try to cut anything else this way. I was not thinking about it not being end grain. I've been cutting a lot of end grain. In fact, let me just stop with the fact that I wasn't thinking. I didn't think the project through. I just had a block I wanted to get into a bowl shape or something else, and I figured I'd go to it. Now, I would move my tool rest a little bit and pick this cut up again and carry it through the top just by rub and bevel and coming around. I get a little double rub where I 
double rubbing on the tool and you can't really see it too good. Let me see if I can get you in where you can see it. Ah, come on, reach out here. Those are tool rubs. I have a little bit of its hair and that's going to happen because of the soft and dryness of this wood. But that's not, that, that'll sand out with 180 grit quickly. If I want to if I really want to make it look good, I could go back with a scraper type cut and just sear scrape it coming uphill and that'll get rid of it and knock out any high spots. And that's easy to do, but I'd be wanting to scrape only in this direction. Up, up, up. When I flip it around and go the other way, I really want to go the other way when I turn this ball around and want to start down on the inside I'm going to show this to you because it's what I have is a glue block so I get positive registration uh, and let, let, I'm going to stop and explain something I started this piece very simply I took a bowl, a block of wood and I rounded it off and I put a depression. You see that? That's about an inch and three-eighths by three-quarter to an inch deep depression. And then I put it over here on these spigot jaws and this chuck. But a lot of you guys don't have the money to buy a lot of jaws and a lot of chucks. My deal here is I'm trying to save you money I'm not holding up a catalog saying you gotta buy this. You really need to have that. You can't live without this. Because most of the time you can live without it. But most of us have a chuck. So, if we only have one chuck, I wouldn't do this. I would put this on a four inch face plate. Center it up, make it round, drill it in, put a four inch face plate you do know the part about no drywall screws right it's going to be a mild steel screw because they don't crack drywall screws are made for what hello hello drywall because they crack now I put a small face plate and let's pretend now put on our pretend caps and we put it on a small face plate and we roughed it in and then we hooked up our our glue block and our glue block is right here and it's running true alright for all intentions it's running true because I would true this up again once it's on there I bring up my tailstock and make sure that tenon let's do it I don't want, you to, I don't want to, to fake anything with you alright there it is there it is I glued that glue block on okay you with me now I just glued this glue block on this piece. And we're doing a lot of this in real time so you can understand it. This angle right here matches the angle on the inside of those jaws. I'm going to true this up. See, I got out of registration a little bitty bit. I'm true. That's a glue block and it's running true. I'm on a face plate or a screw chuck. I could be on a screw chuck and accomplish the same thing, okay? Now, I want to put a, a chuck on here. I saw a video recently where a guy said when you turn around you have to re-register it, re it because it won't be true. No, it will be true. This is my chuck. This is along a, a strong hole by one way. This is an adapter that screws into the base of my chuck. It's the same size as the spindle head. This is my revolving center. The revolving center and the gizmos that go along with it are as critical as to any chuck that you have. And why am I not finding that little bitty hole in there? There it is. Now, 
I'm going to thread this on to this little adapter. Seeing all this in real time, I'm not shutting it down because this is how quick it goes. Or how slow it goes, depends on if you find the hole or not. Now, this is running as true to this shaft as it is to the headstock. Alright, I'm going to bring it up, open up the jaws a little bit, plant it against that piece, tighten the jaws down. Now, here you are boys and girls, this chuck is running as true as the faceplate. The shaft, the shaft, the spindle, the spindle. It's running true and it's holding that bowl. Now, all I need to do is loosen it up. If it was on a faceplate, I would nice and gently be holding over here and unscrew the faceplate off the headstock and then pull it back, take my screw gun and take it out. What am I taking out? I'm not taking out drywall screws. You got that? You got that. Okay, now, look look how true that's running. No re-registration necessary. This is ready. Now, you can't do anything over here at all, but you just take it off this block and you put it over there to go back to working on it again. That's what I'm going to do while you take a break. Hey, while it's time to take a break, let me tell you what the deal is. Big Eye Productions. That's the deal. It's coming up on Christmas holidays. Yesterday was Thanksgiving. Still in slightly in the turkey coma. But I'm getting phone calls from wood turners who want to get their husbands or their wives or their friends or their family or their buddies some carbide cutters for Christmas. Well, Big Eye Productions. www. Here it is. EddieCastelan.com. This address right here. That's the one you want to go to to look for carbide cutters. Now, I can't refer to the CI-93s and the CR-24s and all that. I can't use those numbers. They belong to somebody else. But, I do have those cutters. Yes, I've got 16 millimeter round for one half of the price that the catalog services get them. One half the price! They're packed in packs of three to make them economically feasible to ship and sell. And guess what, guys? Turners. I don't care how many cutters you buy from me. Buy one or three of everything. I only charge you $3 freight per order of cutters. Not per package, per order of cutters. Find that somewhere else. It doesn't happen. Hey, if you're looking for carbide cutters, you need to be looking right here. Big Guy Productions at www.eddiecastelan.com If you're looking to sharpen up, check out the Blackhawk system. It's all wor well worth the trip to www.eddiecastelan.com I flipped this around. You should take note. It's on the chuck. I just pulled the face plate right off the other end of it or unscrewed it off the screw chuck or whatever and I now have it mounted in a chuck and I use the gizmo to do it. The gizmo is very important. If you're going to invest in a chuck and you have a revolving center, you need that third part, you need that adapter. They are sold three quarter ten, which is the revolving center, to the thread size that fits into your chuck. Don't buy the wrong thread size. Okay, now I have it done. I want to show you something. Look at the registration. It's a little far away. Let me get you up a little closer so you can see the registration. Watch this. Pretty darn close, huh? Yeah, because when you flip it from the screw chuck to the chuck and it's all on the same axis and then you tighten it down, you don't have a problem with it unregistering or falling out of round. Now, it will move a little bit, but guess what? What does wood do best? Wood moves. So maybe in relieving the stresses and being overnight, or a couple hours, or sometimes just a few moments, the wood's moved a little bit. But no more than I can, no, nothing more than I can handle. Okay? Now, I have it on here. What are these lines? 
these are the grains of the wood. Now, a lot of guys believe that making this cut, the easiest way to hollow this bowl out, is just do a big drag cut, drag cut, drag cut. I actually watched a world famous professional turner do a bowl like this just with a scraper. And he said, if we believe it's difficult, until the 30s or 40s, that's the only tool that was used to do that type of, type of work. Because what we have in tools wasn't available then. But now we have the gizmos and gadgets. Now I want to show you, for this to cut right, if I do a pull cut, if I just stick a tool in here and start pulling back, all these, all these points sticking out, I'm going to be cut tearing the ends of them off. So the best way to make this cut is from out here, sweeping it through. Out here, sweeping it through. Watch. This is ready to go. Remember, the grain runs across. That, and that's why we're cutting down and across because we're going to slice the ends off. If I come back up, I'll tear them. I'm going to do a little bit. I'll put a stick on so you can see what's happening with the flute. And moderate speed is about 1200 RPMs. Okay? Just do a couple light passes. And look how I have the flute at about a 45 degree angle. This is very sharp and I'm very comfortable with it at this. And I can just slide it right through. Now, I have to keep both hands on because it's safe, but actually all my energy is running straight down the tool. I read a little bit of a cut there and then all I'm doing is... Look, watch the bevel now. See how it slides right down that line? Just a 3 8 inch shell's worth grind. This is on a 3 8 inch deep fluted hollowing go uh, bow gouge from Dave Seaway Tools. You hear all that noise? That's because I'm, I'm I'm, I'm pulling it around, I'm getting more bevel in it than I need to. Now, I would set the bottom depth before I continue, but right now I want to show you something. Get in there. Get in there. Do you see the tears? Oh, wait a minute. There aren't any tears. That's in grain. It's not torn. It's sliced off. Now, while you're still here, I'm going to do something. Watch this. I wasn't hogging it. But I want to show you what happened. See the tears? See all the tears? And that is such an easy cut to make. The reason I did this is sometimes you get in a position where your body language says pulling on that, doing that little pull cut across the bottom of that bowl is so much easier and you remove so much wood that you think simple makes good. Simple doesn't make good. If I was close to my finish width or dimension and that happened, I'll have to scrape, shear scrape, or sand the living wine out of this thing in order to get rid of those tears. And in some woods, I won't get rid of all the damage. I'd still have a mark or a tear or a pull or something else. Whereas a simple move, easy move would have been to come out here, read the bevel, take that, take that tool and swing it through the arc and get all the way through the piece. I would have been slicing off the grain and making a better cut. Danny Marks Lay calls it wood slicing, not wood turning. Wood turning is turning is what the machine does. Slicing is what you do. 
So next time you're trying to make a good cut on a good piece, think it through. If it's too simple, too easy, go at it one more time. And I think you'll like the results. I'm Captain Eddie Castle, and today you've been with me as we were making shavings. Yeah, a little bit of shavings, big shavings, whatever. We made shavings. You take care, be good. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. You want to do me a favor? Yeah, you do. All right, here's a deal. If you buy my carbide cutters and you like them, tell another wood turner. Really. Put it on the forums. Put it on whatever all those social medias are. If you buy my, my tools and you don't like them, tell me first. Okay? I'm going to go back to fixing my mess up. You take. Hey, wood turners! I'm Captain Eddie Castle, and shaping up a piece and trying some new gouges. Yep, yeah, you, you do know that when I'm doing this, I'm normally playing with somebody else's tools. People order tools, bring them by, say, what do you think about this? And, you know, it's just something I like to do. You know what else I like to do? I like to demonstrate for clubs. Yeah, so if you're interested in having me come to your club to do a demonstration, all you have to do is ask. That's right. Oh, I got a rate chart. I mean, I have to charge you to come out there and do it. But I'm more reasonable than most of the other turners that do that kind of stuff. And I like to have fun at it. And as you can see on my YouTube videos, nothing sacred. And I do like to have fun. So if you're interested in having me, Captain Eddie, come visit you, just drop me a note at eddiecastellin at cox.net. eddiecastellin at cox.net. I messed this up earlier and I'm going back through fixing it. And that's one of the things I can show you. 